Hello everyone. I'm Jenny, and we have an interesting fire lesson for you today. It's about a man by the name of Moses and a bush that was on fire, yet this bush was not being burned up by this fire. Most people would be rubbing their eyes to figure out if what they were seeing is true or just a wild vision or dream. But let me assure you that this was reality. The rest of the team will be here to share more with you after a few moments. I will see you next week. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God Greetings everyone. I'm JV, the Bible Junkie. I'm here today with our memory verse. It's found in the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, 
There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire it did not burn up. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2. NIV. At the count of three, I want you to say the verse with me. Ready? One, two, and three. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire it did not burn up. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2. NIV. Now remember that no one had ever seen a bush that was on fire. But what was different here, was that the bush was not burning up like it would normally do. So, Moses was taken back by curiosity and knew that this was not a natural thing happening. Fire always burns up whatever it touches. Listen up to the rest of the team today. I'm JB the Bible Junkie, and I will see you next week. Hello everyone, I'm PF, and yes, we have a great fire story for you today. It's about Moses and the burning bush. But before we get into that, I want you to understand that as a baby, Moses was hidden for three months before Pharaoh's daughter got him out of the water and found him after he was put in the water floating. That is, in a basket. <laughs> All right, so she raised him as her child, and he was taught by the best in, that Egypt had to offer. But remember that he was in Egypt until he accidentally killed a guard who was beating on one of the Jews. And after this, for fear of his life, he fled and ended up in the wilderness and ends up tending sheep and marries the daughter of the guy that he's working for, tending his flock, and Moses, according to what we can pinpoint as much as we can in Scripture, would have been approximately about 40 years old during this time, before the burning bush experience. Now, on this particular day, when Moses was tending Jethro's flock near Mount Horeb, he saw something most unusual, a bush that was burning, but yet not being consumed. Imagine that. And a voice that called out his name. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of the bush and began talking to him. The angel said that he was a messenger from the Lord God and told him to take off his shoes, which Moses did as he was told, only because the angel said, you are standing on holy ground. Now, hey, the rest of the team will be here to share more of this story and tell you a lot more than what I did. But it is time for me to get out of here, so I'm going to say goodbye. See you later, everybody. Today we're talking about the burning bush that Moses had an encounter with. If you could imagine with me for a moment about experiencing this amazing event. Seeing the fire and realizing that the bush was not being burned up. Well, I have a Bible here today, and this Bible is also called a fire Bible. For the longest time I did not understand how a Bible could be called a fire Bible. But it really is. This Bible is going to be set on fire. Here we go, just watch. Do you see the Bible is on fire, yet it's not burning up? Then imagine hearing the voice of God speak to you and call you into the full-time ministry for God. Wow! This is a simple illustration, but remember, to do this you need to have a special Bible. So, do not try this at home. Your parents will not be happy if you do. I am Professor Whoopi, and I'm here to whoopie up a big one for you today. Oh, now let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. 
And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here am I. Do not come any closer, God said, but take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. And that's Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 in the NIV. All right, now, while tending the flocks, he sees a bush on fire, but this bush is not being burned up. So Moses goes in for a closer look when all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord speaks and calls him by name, and he calls his name twice. Now, in verse 5, God tells Moses not to come any closer. And then he told him, now take off your shoes because you are standing on holy ground. In verse 6, this messenger identified himself as God. And he told Moses to remove his shoes because he was standing on holy ground, but also because taking off one's shoes represented a sign of reverence, humility, and respect. And believe me, Moses understood that if this is God speaking to him, well, then he had better have some respect. All right. So did Moses obey God in the burning bush while he was having this experience? Well, the answer is both yes and no reluctantly that is now you see god called him at the burning bush but moses disagreed and did not obey quickly he kept questioning god during the first encounter in the last verse of this chapter you read where god one by one took all of moses's concerns away because he was going to make him a great leader of israel as their relationship grew Moses had faith in God in everything. Even when the task became harder, he followed God's command. Whoa, I like that. Okay, now, the rest of the team will be here today to finish wrapping everything up for you. And they got some good things to say, so you better listen to them. All right, but it is time for me to say goodbye. Avirase, arrivederci, hasta la vega, hasta la vida, a hula hula, ho 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 ho, last but not least, Aruba boo as always ha 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 yeah 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 don't ever forget that god jesus and the holy spirit and professor whoopi and friends we love you and we want to see the best for you goodbye popper kids is a very poor person so moses wandered in the desert until he met and married his wife and then he went to work as a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro. And that? And something amazing happened to me. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. Did you catch that? Moses saw a bush on fire, but it wasn't burning up. Moses was curious and had to check out this burning miracle. And as he got closer, something even crazier happened. God spoke to Moses through the burning bush. Moses! Moses! Here I am! Do not come any closer! The Lord warned. 
Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face, because he was afraid to look at God. Can you ima- Sorry. Can you imagine Moses' confusion? A bush is on fire, but not really. And then a voice calls out his name. Wow, you don't see that every day. God told Moses that he was going to save his people out of Egypt. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. Hello everyone, I'm Zach with some final thoughts for today. I have three things to share with you. First, what is the moral of the story of Moses? Scared for his life, and rightly so. Moses fled to Midian and began a new occupation as a shepherd. While God used this time to mature Moses and prepare him for his next assignment, you and I shouldn't run from our mistakes. Instead, leaders own their failures, face the consequences, and learn not to make them again. Secondly, what was Moses' main message? He heard the voice of God, with a message asking him to save the people who were enslaved in Egypt, and lead them to the promised land. Even after all the excuses Moses gave God, God, took every one of his excuses away, and gave Moses confidence to do the job being called for. Thirdly, what is a burning bush experience? We all have experienced, what could be called a burning bush moment. These moments occur when we sense that God is seeking our attention, speaking to us, and calling us to participate in what God is doing, in our midst. Burning bush moments changes our life, and the lives of those around us forever. Maybe it's time, for you to embrace your burning bush experience. It's been great to be with you this week. I'll be back next week with more, for you. Remember as it's already been stated that the burning bush, as a powerful symbol, represents God's miraculous energy, sacred light, illumination and the burning heart of purity, love and clarity to both Jews and Christians. It also represents Moses' reverence and fear before the Divine Presence. Let's look in on our guts today, to see what they are up to. Well guys, when Moses had the encounter at the burning bush. Oh. I know this. You can look at this encounter that Moses had as something we all face. How right you both are. Each of us faces some type of burning bush experience. Seriously? Although if I think about it, my relative the Apostle John had a burning bush experience when he wrote the book of Revelation. Yes, I've heard this before. Yet I seem to love to hear about it again. Man, think about the various ways that God called us to do what we're doing today for God. Yes, you are so right. Wow, this brings back memories of where I came from in my walk with God. Brothers, let's pray and ask God to show us more of what He wants us to do for Him. So, as these guys get together to pray, and ask God for direction, they feel the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon each of them as they begin, they start to write down what God is giving them to write. But then, instead of writing, they began one by one to give an utterance in the Spirit. Praise the Lord God Almighty. He is awesome in wonder and glorious coming King. Lift up every voice and sing to the Lord, for His beauty is overwhelming and His glory fills the whole earth. Great are you Lord God of Israel, and the Lord God of all your hands have created. Your majesty is everlasting, and your rule will go on forever and ever. All, All praise, praise to the Lord, the Lord God, God Almighty, who was, who was and, and is, and is, and is to come. I feel brothers that we have just received our new commission from the Lord God. To proclaim Him in all the earth. To let everyone that will hear, to hear the word of the Lord, and His goodness. Amen. And I say Amen. Amen. So be it Lord God. Amen. To the Most High God, 
of all that he has created. I believe that we just had the privilege of experiencing the call of God to these brothers in the Lord, and to renew the calling God gave them long ago. To proclaim the word of the Lord God in all nations and around the world, to all who will listen to the voice of God. Remember when God calls you, He will equip and guide you as you do His will. I will see you next time. Hey everyone, this is Ollie, and I have a few remarks to make before we close. Wait, did I mark something? Huh, did I use a dry marker? Crayon? Or maybe pencil? Oh, oh well, never mind, I'll figure it out. I'll get on with my closing. First, let me say that this story had me really scared. It scared the stuff out of me so much, I got a little caught in my throat. Anyway, that's why I sound a little footy. It's fuzzy. <laughs> anyway, what does, what does the burning bush represent, Moses? Well, the burning bush, as a powerful symbol, represents God's miraculous energy. Sacred light, illumination, and burning heart of purity, love, and clarity to both the Jews and Christians. It represents Moses' reverence and fear before the divine presence of the Almighty. Wow! Those are a lot of big words. But what does Exodus teach us? A wonderful divine principle is taught in this passage. When God calls a person to serve Him, He will always empower and enable His servant to become successful in everything He does. So one final note of interest today. Does the burning bush still burn today? No, silly. But a monastery was built around this bush and they protected the root of this bush, which is on display for all to see. Here is a picture of this bush that Moses saw on the fire back in his day. The burning bush in the monastery is the site at which Moses received his first instruction from God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into Canaan. Bible. <laughs> Weird, huh? This bush was on fire once, but not burnt. This bush continues to grow even today. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.